It's time politics. I am Kaya Kikyolu. On the news this hour. At last, President Muhammad Buhari makes his first appointment for the second term with the announcement of Mele Kiari as the new general or group general manager of the NMPC. And governor's stakeholders are worried on the security situation in the country. We find out the possible solutions. Polls have been picked in the conduct of the 2019 elections as experts discuss ways of making our electoral process much better. Welcome everyone to the program. It's on the note of the announcement of a new appointment that we kick off this noon bulletin. It is 21 days since President Muhammad Buhari was sworn in and today he has made what could be described as the very first appointment of his second term. The President has appointed Mr. Mele Kolokiari as the new Group Managing Director of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation. That's the NMPC. Until his new appointment, Kerry, a geologist, was Group General Manager, Crude Oil Markets and Division of the NMPC, and also doubled since May the 13th, 2018, as Nigeria's national representative to the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC. A statement by the NMPC Group General Manager, Group Public Affairs, Mr. Undu Ogamadu, says, the president also appointed seven new chief operating officers. They are Roland Honoro de Wubare, upstream, Mustafa Yakubu Refining and Petrochemicals, Yusuf Usman, Gas and Power, Laurentia Dupu Ventures, Adeyemi Aditsunji Downstream, and Farouk Said Corporate Services, as well as Umar Ajiya, is now the new Chief Financial Officers. The newly appointed GMD and Chief Operating Officers are to work with the current occupiers of the various offices till July the 7th, 2019, for a smooth transition on July the 8th, when their appointments will take effect. Speaking of appointments, there have been talks about how much the president needs to hit the ground running since taking over the saddle for the next four years. Well, analysts have debated that it is legally and morally incorrect for the president to keep his appointees, which he worked with during the first time, or the first time rather, without renewing or announcing new ones for the second term. Mr. Ian Kaldumaki and Mr. Clito Sorbonne debated this matter on our political program, Politics Today. We don't have time on our side. And the last time we waited for six months before we had the cabinet, and we went through it four years, we could, we could not point out steadily performance. How long does it take to get it right? If we, are, we have spent 21 days after inauguration, and not one single appointment, it's a cause for worry. And I think we need more seriousness on the part of government. Second, the government of Nigeria is not the personal staff of the president. The chief of staff of the president is not the personal staff of the president. These are statutory appointments that has to do with the governance of the country. And we cannot be, when, when, a, when a serious mess, ministerial appointments do not in any way, some, in some cases, it exacerbates crisis in most areas. That, like we said, it is about governance. It is about giving direction. It is about executing things. I agree on the issue of the service chiefs, for All example. Right. There should be at least a minimum of reshufflement because some of them have shown clear ineptitude about what to do with their portfolio. If you cannot remove them, at least shuffle them. Well, the Presidential Elections Petitions Tribunal resumed session today. And uh, the tribunal has adjourned the pretrial hearing in the petition filed by the Hope Democratic Party to enable the party and its presidential candidate, Mr. Ambrose Owuru, respond to an application for change of counsel, which was filed by a factional chairman of the party, Mr. Poland Tambra. At the resumed hearing of the tribunal, the chairman of the tribunal drew the attention of the party to a motion filed on behalf of the party seeking to change its counsel. However, counsel to HDP, that's Hope Democratic Party, and its presidential candidate, Mr. Oliver Ayo, informed the tribunal that whoever filed the motion is a middlesome interloper who has nothing before the court, and in any case, it was just served this morning and he will need time to respond. And in a short bench ruling, the chairman of the tribunal, Justice Mohammed Garuba, adjourned to Tuesday, June the 25th, for further hearing. Amakako, Amakao Kafo is live for us for more on this hearing.
The Presidential Election Tribunal has adjourned to June the 25th, 2019 to continue the pretrial hearing in the petition of the Hope Democratic Party and its presidential candidate, Mr. Ambrose Awaru. At the resumption of the seating today, the chairman of the tribunal announced that there was a motion before the tribunal asking for a change of counsel for the Hope Democratic Party. But the counsel who has been representing the party and its presidential candidate, Mr. Oliver Eyo told the tribunal that he doesn't know who filed the said application and in any case he was just um, served this morning and will require time to respond to the said motion. Other parties however in the suit said they had been served a day before but after listening to all parties the chairman of the tribunal Justice Mohammed Gerba in a bench ruling agreed to adjourn to a further date to allow the, hope, the council to hope Democratic Party and its presidential candidate respond to the said motion. He therefore adjourned to June the 25th, 2019 for the continuation of the pretrial hearing in the petition filed by the Hope Democratic Party. Back to you, Lagos. Thank you, Amaka. Well, there have been series of reviews on the 2019 elections, and it is the second day of the Election Roundtable Forum, which is organized by Election Civil Society Situation Room. Now, critical issues have been raised on the conduct of the elections and what the INEC should focus on and fix in the coming elections. Yesterday at the, uh, elect uh, at the event, the electoral umpire expressed serious concern about the numbers of registered political parties in Nigeria, as well as a growing demand for more parties. The leadership of INEC believes that there is an urgent need to review the qualifications for registering political parties in Nigeria. The privileges and indeed the profits the privileges and indeed the opportunities that democracy should create for us as a continent is denied us simply because we cannot conduct elections that everybody is proud of. And I would say that we indeed were not proud of the 2019 Nigeria general elections. And so we would have the opportunity to freely express ourselves. We note that in the several reports that have been put out already by the European Union, by NDI, uh, the reaction from the government of Nigeria has indicated, and indeed from INEC, a willingness to look at the reports, take lessons from it, and move forward. If we register all the political parties, that all the political associations that have applied for registration, we are going to go into the 2023 uh, elections uh, with over 200 political parties. And INEC itself is doing a self-reappraisal of the situation in the wake of the 2019 elections, where indications emerged that Nigeria may have an electronic voting system come 2023. But that is if the suggestions from a senior member of the country's electoral body is given consideration. INEC National Commissioner Mr. Solomon Shoebi explains that the cost of mistrust in the Nigerian electoral process is huge and overstretching. He also explains that the commission had a good outing in Lagos, despite the logistic challenges that led to the postponement of the election. Mr. Shoebi, however, advised that there should be a consideration for electronic balloting. The 2019 election was particularly logistics uh, uh, problem, uh, problemed by the fact that the Commission on our side we overestimated our own capacity and we actually overrated the efficacy of some of the supporting facilities that we did. For the first time, we used close to 2 million tons of paper for the conduct of this election. We had to rely on services from uh, FAA. You will be shocked to realize that even the airport in, Lego, in Abuja I had to look for forklifts to assist them Simple things like forklifts were missing in our airports, and this caused a major delay, at least in the conduct of the election. Honestly, in my opinion, if we, could go, if we can go the old org of having electronic uh, uh, balloting, it will help the system, it will erase a lot of things.
Well, let's now head over to Bochi State, where there has been a mild drama at the State House of Assembly, where the election of the presiding officers has reportedly held earlier than scheduled, leading to the emergence of a speaker from the Old Progressives Congress and a deputy speaker from the House Majority Party of the People's Democratic Party. Well, 18 members elect of the APC have held a parallel elections of the speaker and deputy speakers at the assembly complex in front of the mace symbol. Mr. Kawuwa Damina, the former speaker in the 8th House of Assembly, has been returned as parallel speaker through a voice vote. Earlier this morning at uh, about 7 a.m., 11 members elected Abubakar Suleiman of the APC as a speaker and Danlami Kawule of PDP as a deputy speaker. The time scheduled for the inauguration was 10 a.m., but the 11 members were said to have come as early as 6 a.m. to elect a speaker and then went ahead with the inauguration. Out of the 11, nine are of the PDP, one member of the NMPP, and one member from the APC. State House of Assembly to security matters now. Discussions around the nation's security challenges tops the deliberations as the Nigeria Governors Forum held its maiden meeting in Abuja after the election of its leadership in May. The meeting, which was presided over by Governor Kaidi Fayemi of Ekiti State, who is also the chairman of the forum, resolved to set up a security committee at the National Economic Council level to review the nation's security situation. The forum, however, did not take a stand on the issue of state police. The new leadership highlighted the key priorities on their agenda, which include security, human capital development, jobs creation, constitutional reform, particularly devolution, and strengthening the NGF Secretariat to support economic advisory, policy advisory, knowledge management, and public financial management. The forum resolved to propose the setting up of a security committee at the National Economic Council level and retain security as a recurring item on the agenda of the NGF for the foreseeable future in order to continuously monitor developments and security situation. State police is obviously an issue that is of interest to citizens and governors as well, and we'll continue to review our position on this and communicate that to you when we have a definite position as far as state police is concerned, as a forum. Three members also resolved to relaunch its flagship state peer review mechanism program designed to assist states, foster good governance, and accelerate the rate of development through periodic reviews of progress made by state governments. Well, in a related development, Governor Baba Gana Zulum of Borno State is losing sleep over the security situation in his state. This explains the reason for his visit to the presidential villa in Abuja to discuss ways to end the attacks. The visit is coming 48 hours after three suicide bombers detonated explosives at a football viewing center in Konduga, killing at least 40 people. The governor who spoke to State House correspondents after the meeting believes the steps being taken by the federal government will yield positive results. He also believes in strengthening the capacity of the civilian volunteers to assist the military in fighting insurgency. Basically, we wanted to address the root causes of the insurgency, especially the issue of access to rot, the issue of access to farmlands, and the issue of strengthening our civilian JTF and as well as the military to perform their job better than before. Security issues are issues that need not to be discussed anyhow. But the government of Borno State is collaborating well with the military and other paramilitary to ensure that the citizens are being protected. Especially on my own part, I'm trying to strengthen the local, uh, local people, that means the, the, the community, to be resilient enough, especially by providing them with logistics like vehicles and others so that they should also uh, make some certain surveillances support the military but by and large 
Our discussions with the military have gone well, and we are doing everything possible within our reach to ensure that stability has come to the people of Burma State. And most importantly, uh, there is need for also to open other opportunities of bringing down the crisis rather than the kinetic force. It's also very important. Those people who are willing, people who have been forced to join the insurgencies, I think if the government can do favor by allowing them to reintegrate integrate into the society, I think it's good. Well, in a moment, we'll be getting some perspectives to the security situation in the country. And we have a security expert, Mr. Kabir Adamu, from our Abuja studio to give some advice and try to forge a way forward. That's after the break. And also, local government administrators in Kwara fight the action of the governor. Details after the break. Stay with us. <laughs> 